How wonderful is that? This is Kate McCusker, who appeared live in this programme not so long ago. It was a big hit with her and her sister. Well, a big hit with me, anyway, I'll tell you that. They're very, very good. That's Kate McCusker from Oma. That's a lovely song, isn't it? Uh, I always forget the title of it. I always have to look at it and take the thing out and look at it. Yes, it's called uh, The Way. Wouldn't you think I could remember that? Good morning. The number to call if you want to contact this program. Good morning. My name is Gerald Michael Anderson. I'm a regular broadcaster on the airwaves. I'm here most mornings. What's wrong with your head? Um, Frantic movement in there. It scared yeah, me. The uh, speed of your movement almost frightened me there. Fun, fun, funny head. Ba, 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 ba. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 The email address. Are you just starting? I'm not distorting, no. Sure? I'm, I'm sure I'm not distorting, yes. I'm not distorting, it's just a little loud, probably. Yes, maybe that's what it 08459 is. 555 678 is the number to ring if you want to contact this programme. The email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk and the text messaging service for those All of you... All too much. Too much information. Well, the people should be ready. I'm, I've been up since seven. On the wee programme, I give it in bits and... That's pieces. because you're talking to people who are not entirely oh, well. Oh, <coughs> oh so, uh, well, uh, look, a man has sent me a photograph of Florida yesterday. It's in the 80s. And look that's mine. That's my email. I stole How it. dare you take my email? I stole it. It's a photograph of a sun setting. Yours? Yes, that's mine. No, it doesn't say you on it. Look at the top. It's from B. Ennis, Billy Ennis. That's yours, yeah. Yes, that's mine. What am I doing with this? Exactly. What's that stuff doing in my machine? Anyway, listen. He's the man I visit. You see, I so he's sure telling that. me there's no, oh, sh- yeah, there's no yeah, snow. Yeah. I'll be round there in February. Yes, yeah, yes. I know. <laughs> listen, uh, Jimmy Ellis is not Jimmy Ellis. Who? <laughs> Jimmy Nesbitt has come out. He's come seen, out. It's about his hair. Oh, do you remember a little while ago? You outed him. I outed him. No, well, you see, we, we did talk about his well, his thatch. As his thatch appeared very quickly, and uh, I commented that perhaps there may have been some artificial help there. And uh, we were discouraged from talking about that because maybe we thought he might get annoyed. So we decided amongst ourselves not to mention that because it was a matter of personal, well, hygiene. Well, can you not mention the other man either? No. I said you can't mention him. There's another one. There's another one, yeah. Well, you see, we don't know about him. He hasn't come out yet. No. But uh, Jimmy has come out. 
and he says he is not ashamed to admit it. It's in the Belfast Telegraph today. Actor James Nesbitt was photographed sporting a full head of healthy hair on Sunday night. Well, I think he had it about a year ago as well, but that's neither here nor there. And he was on stage, as he was on stage, to host a charity event at Manchester United's Old Trafford Ground. Now, here's the, 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 the sad part about it. You see, we discovered this a while ago. Mm-hmm. You see, it says here that he has recorded a video testimonial for Dublin Hair Clinic Hair Restoration in Black Rock. Mm-hmm. Now, we have discovered them some time ago. And I made, well, I suppose... Well, uh, rep- excuse me, less of the we. All right, you did. No, you did. I did. I've oh, the, the program staff. Yeah, but why should I look for for hair restoration? Oh, you clinics? think you're great, do you? With well, your I, little wispy I'm grey be, hair. I'm better than you. I know, but yours is what? Private. You've Protestant hair. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying it's different from my hair. Anyway, it's uh, it's hair that you won't let go of. Anyway. The 45-year-old is hoping by sharing his previous feelings about baldness and details of his two subsequent hair plants. See, that's the thing. That's the thing that annoyed me. See, we discovered that a man can get a reasonably good thatch from this company, and apparently it's quite good. I thought it was just a one trip, and there's quite a bit of money involved. I'm not going to mention a particular sum. But do you remember we talked about it? I was prepared to go that far. Yes. I was prepared to go that far. But now I discover you have to go down three times. Mm. In other words, the sum that I'm prepared to go... Four figures you were prepared to pay. Well, I was prepared to pay four, but if you multiply four figures by three, sometimes you get five. (laughs) Do you know what I'm saying? That's beyond my price range. So I'm going to remain the way I am. But it's good to see him coming out. He said that as his new hairline has drawn considerable attention, he wanted to use his positive experiences to help other men who are suffering from hair loss. Men like me, look at me suffer. Look at me. Do I look mm. as like I'm suffering? You see, I don't think men should be uh, called... No, they should not be said to be suffering from hair loss because you don't feel anything. Yeah. How can you suffer if you don't feel? It's emotional. It's vanity. See, Basically, I, I mean, I if, I'm, stand, if I'm sitting comment. here... If yes. I'm sitting here baldy, mm-hmm. I'm not suffering. I'm just a boy that's sitting here baldy. Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to be, I'd like to have hair because then women might look at me. I'm not suffering. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, he suffers from baldness. So it's not, I, it's different if you've got alopecia or something. But even then, there's no pain. No. You're not really suffering. Your vanity suffers. But I mean, what is your vanity anyway? So I, I would like hair because I just would like hair. I'm not suffering. Do I look as if I'm suffering? But why do you want hair? Because I want women to look at me. You see? So it, it is a vanity to. thing. That's what I've just yes, said. I'm not van- suffering. No, I know, but it's a vanity thing. Yeah, That's it's not a, as yeah. if you know... Yeah, so you're vain. My vain? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're vain. <laughs> I'm not vain. Well, but I, can you see me getting it done? Have I got it done? The only thing that's preventing you is the price. Yes. That's not vanity. That's meanness. <laughs> <laughs> so it's vanity and Scrooge. Oh. No, the point is this. That he's talking about this, and it's a good thing. You know Jimmy Ness, but he's a very nice guy. Mm-hmm. But there's no word from the other guy. No. Well, the other one. Yeah. Eh? I wonder how many times he's been. I'd say by the look of him, 20. Yeah. <laughs> he's got hair that you couldn't even run a lawnmower through. And he had none at all, for God's sake. Anyway, let's not talk about Paddy there's a, there's, a, there's, a call, <laughs> there's a call on one. Is there? Yes. Look, look. What? Ken has put another note on this. It says do not use something in there. It says do not use yet. Yeah. But I don't know what it is. How do I know not to use it if I don't know what it is? Do not use yet. Do you know what that means? That means that I'm going to use it. I know. Because anyone who says to me... Push it up and see what happens. Go yeah. Yeah, I've done it. What's that? No. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Did anything happen? No, there's nothing connected to it yet. That's what I think that's what he, he means. He just put that there to annoy me because yeah. he knew I would do it. But there's a call on one. All right then, okay. I'm going to use it. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Gary. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Well, I'm ringing in, actually, uh, on behalf of my sister, who was in Belfast yesterday and uh, discovered a, a next bag full of clothing um, at the front of the City Hall, beside the taxi rank. New clothing? Uh, 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 new, new clothing, yes, with a receipt in the bag. Um, yes. And the taxi driver says, we don't want anything to do with it. But we just <laughs> thought maybe somebody would be listening who would... Uh, be looking for what they had bought. Well, the taxi driver said, well, I'm not, I want nothing to do with that. We shop in Monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not good enough for us. I'm a gap person. So um, my sister left it then back at Next, so they're holding it over in the bag. It was paid by credit card, so it's right, the person. Then. Okay. 
can hear them, that's great. They can go and collect it. All right, so there's a bag full of uh, Next clothing uh, found in Belfast yesterday. Where did you find it, by the way? At the front of the City Hall, just beside the taxi rank. So okay, somebody you... obviously jumped into a taxi and left the bag behind them. They must have done, yes. All right, then. Okay, well, that's good of you to do that. And you've got that. We've got your number. So anyone out there who makes inquiries about that, so they'll be able to tell you what's in it before you give it to them. No, it... it's actually at the next door, so they'd have to go. We left it back oh, in the next... yes. So they can just go back into Next and they have got it and it was paid by credit card. Back so into Next, you're off thinking, but just their own credit card, it's theirs. It's theirs, that's right. Thank you very much. And I think your hair is lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I never even asked for that. No, I, I'm great from the front. It's only when you go around the back you get a shock. <laughs> I just, okay, I just need a, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Okay. She said my hair was lovely. Yeah, but you're not great from the front. You're not great. I'm Don't, all right from no, the front. No, no, no. Now give me that. You're passable. Give me that. Yes. Give me give me the fact that I'm go- all right from the you're front. You're all right when you're indoors. You're not great from, from any angle. From the front. Indoors? Yes. When, you, when you're when you outside. When you're doing I'm all right when I'm outside. No, you're not. No, I'm no, fine when I'm you're outside. You're wispy woo. I'm not wispy woo. You are. There are people out there who are wispy woo, but I'm not one of them. I drove off with the kettle on the roof this morning. I'm sure that surprised the postman. Oh. See a man driving down with the kettle on his no, roof. No, I, I, when I stopped to I pick up... I know how that happened. When I stopped to pick up the wheelie bin, I discovered it. Uh-huh, just as well. Mm-hmm. I know how that happened. Yeah. Can I just say something? Oh. I did a thing yesterday, which I never did before. What? I walked into a shop. I was My car was parked outside a pub where I'd left it the night before. Right. <laughs> because I couldn't find it. <laughs> And uh, the the windscreen was completely iced up, as it was you know, yesterday yes. morning, like everyone else. Yes. So I was beside a shop, so I said to myself, I know what I'll do. Because I had no access to a, a kettle and a pot of water, mm-hmm. warm water, with which to free the windscreen, I said, I'll just go in here and buy some some de-icer. Yes. Right? So I went in and I said, I'll have, have you any de-icer? She said, oh, yes, certainly. And I looked down, there was a million cans sitting down mm-hmm. underneath the counter. So I lifted one and it cost me two quid. So I went out and I sprayed the icer on it. It made absolutely no difference. Ah, but did, did you did you brush away the, the soft snow? Yeah. No, you didn't. Now tell the truth. Tell the truth. I brushed away. Do you think I'm stupid? Do you yeah. think I'm going to put the icer on snow? I brushed away the snow. It made absolutely no difference. And I had it again today. And I said to myself, now, I wonder why that didn't make did any difference. Did you shake the can? Yes, I shook the can. So yes, today I had the same can, right? Uh-huh. So I said to myself, no, I'm, I'm going to really make sure that this is useless because I can't believe there's absolutely no... It makes no difference whatsoever. So I went out, I looked at my Kiar, yeah. and there my Kiar was, a lovely little film of ice. No snow, no nothing. There was no snow last night here. Pure ice on the windscreen. Uh-huh. I said, right, yeah, boy, yeah. I said, come on, can do your work. So I sprayed away and it made absolutely no difference. I mean, none. And I'm saying, what's the point of this? And I could tell you the name of it, but I better not. Did you follow trouble. the instructions carefully? Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, shake the tin and then spray on the windscreen. You, yes. Uh, I, did you, you know, maybe you were too far away from oh, it. Too or too far something. away? Yeah, oh, who um, knows? No, I was a mile. Is that no, too but, far? No, but who knows? I mean... Listen, you've got a can full of stuff. It's like yesterday you told us a story about a car being 50 yards away from you when you walked out in front of it. That's different, I was lying there. And you lied about that. So How far can you be away from your windscreen? What do you want me to do? Like, I don't kind know. Of, you know, like, do it from across the street? Did you read the instructions? I read the instructions. And what does it say? Approach your car. Right. Right? Take right. out your tin. <laughs> no, Shake you your tin. Remove top. Yes. So I took off my shirt. <laughs> uh, place tin near window. Press until liquid comes out onto window, then wait for it to go away. I mean, namely the ice. Not the slightest difference. So people, don't buy de-icer. Maybe there's good de-icer, but this one. Have you got it in the car now? Yeah. Well, we'll try it after the programme. I'll get Ken on the job. Ken will fake that because he wants to prove me wrong. You right. know what he'll do. We'll get it. We'll no, get I don't it. trust you people. I would never do anything because you always are out to prove me wrong. Okay, uh, Janet, go, 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 get the dish. I'll bring it. We can't bring it in here. What about trying it in your wallet? <laughs> See if it'll make it open. <laughs> Listen, uh, Stephen says, don't know if you can fit this in very quickly into your announcements, but I have two standing tickets for the Horse Lips concert tomorrow night at the waterfront. That's tomorrow night, Wednesday, the 1st of December. We are unable to go now. The tickets cost 66, 66 quid. For who? Horse Lips? 
I don't believe you. Are you it. serious? Actually, no, it's not. Be that's a each. mistake. It's not a mistake. It is. It's not a mistake. It says here the tickets no, cost. Not. Do you mean to say there's people who pay sixty six quid to see horse lips? They're all about sixty. They're, Where? They're, they're in the. Uh, uh, sorry, that was very loud. There. I know it's sorry, very, sorry, it's very sorry, rude. Sorry, uh, sorry it's the sorry. waterfront. Uh, but but it's, 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 no, they would like to offer them for forty pounds for the pair. So anyone ah, for the pair? Yeah. Ah, the sixty-six for the pair. Yeah, that's only thirty-three pound a ticket. Would you buy it? No, of course you wouldn't. I would, but you wouldn't. I, I'm talking through you here. I'm speaking with your mind. Well, how much would you? I pay was never them? a horse slips fan. Well, I was. You see, I was never a horse slips fan. You see, I don't believe. Can I just say this to you? Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, there's a certain uh, time in any band's life when they're kind of hot. You know, like cooking. Yeah. That's the time you go and see them. And then what happens is bands are. You take a band like thirty years ago. You name any band, even the undertones. Right. <laughs> he doesn't like that. Yeah. Undertones. You see, they're they're hot and they're cooking. Mm-hmm. And they're like 17, 18, and this is hot as they're going to be, this is good as they're going to be. And then they all get married and stuff, you know, and the whole thing goes haywire. And then they all break up, you see, and then they hate each other. And then 20 years pass, 25 years pass, and then they say, Jesus, boys, there's no money left in this old, this old wallet here. Mm. What about ringing the other boys and saying if they're in the same crack? So you ring up boys and say, well, What's the crack of these boys? If you have any money left, and say, No, I've known, tell you what we'll do, we'll, we'll form again and get that money. That's what they all do. See, what's the point in going to hear a band that's just together for, to make money? What's the point? And I'm not saying that horsemen are doing that, but if they're, they're probably doing the same as everybody else. Uh, milk, milk for the last few quid. Yeah, but the horsemen had a, a huge following. Yes, huge following. Yeah, in so 1977. Yeah, they were a great band. Uh, even though but I, you're, was, you're I missing, was not you're a missing fan. the entire point. I, no, I know what you're saying. I know the what you're point, saying. The entire point, the band that you're the band that you're hearing like, then. Yes, the band that you're hearing then is not the band you're going to hear now. I know it's that. Wild boys but want just, to get home to their bed. Right. How can you? How do you explain people going to see a, a, a show band stars from the past? Because they're trying to relive their youth. But there's four thousand people going to the waterfront. To do to do what? To see see the show bands. They want to see them, want to hear them. But are they not all dead yet? Yeah, but you're, people... you, know, you know. I know, but that's what it is. I mean, I, I, would, yeah. I you wouldn't catch me doing that. But you see, these are people who, who've who got some lack in their lives. They want to relive their youth. I nearly went to see the Hollies. I know, but... A couple of months ago. I know, but that's, you're, you're like those people. You're like no, I stopped myself because I knew it wasn't. The, then I said, that's not the original lineup. I'm not, I'm not going to see them. Anyway, never mind. But heard because all the people, are enjoy, the people are only enjoying themselves. How can you... That's what I'm you saying si- to you. How can you sit there and, and slag people for just going out and enjoying themselves? How can I sit there and <laughs> slag people? <laughs> Maybe yeah. someone out there would like to snap up a decent bargain. There's Horse Lips uh, Waterfront Wednesday the 4th of December. The 1st of December that's 40 quid for the pair um, and the number is here. So there we are. That's tomorrow night. Listen now, uh, with some, have you been following the WikiLeaks? No. Have you not? Uh, with bits and pieces of these. You know what I mean? There's, well, there's, there's, there's 243,000 of them. Yeah. So well, apparently there was a conversation between the Dalai Lama and Pope Benedict. Yeah. Uh, it goes following. Benny Boy. <laughs> Says, Benny boy, what are the sheriffs in the southern states of America? Why are the sheriffs in the southern states of America so fat? And Pope said, I don't know, Dal. Why are the sheriffs in the southern states of America so fat? And the Dalai Lama says, when they get too fat, they run for cover. They run for sheriff. <laughs> said the Pope. <laughs> said the Dalai Lama. They run for what? No, you're too, you're too slow. Hey, 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 yo. You have to learn to keep up. Drifting on a snowflake breeze, spirit in a melody to grace the sidewalk crowd. A laughing Santa rings a bell, and change falls into a wishing giving hands.
lights and stars upon a tree A lady on a ladder strings Her vision in a window scene To grace the sidewalk crowd See the hope on nice song that's uh kimmy rhodes uh she's got a new album out which is called miracles on christmas day you know are you a big fan of kimmy rhodes are you yes not? absolutely well she's appearing live in this program on friday she's going to sing tracks from that album it's a special christmas album called miracles on christmas day and that's uh, the uh that's the title track on it you know people don't realize the trouble i go to to make sure that the listeners get the music that they deserve hugo mm. doesn't bother but it's important that I do it. That Appa- I'm the only one that does it. Apparently you're cutting out today. Am I? Yes. Well, it's through no fault of mine, I have yes. to say. Uh-huh. Listen, a man's very concerned about your uh, about well, about your health. There's a call, by the way. Is there? Mm-hmm. What's the concern? Well, it's a lengthy concern. Uh, uh-huh. And maybe perhaps I should deal with the call first. Yes. Maybe deal with you later. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jerry. Yes, who's this? Pat Fern, Jerry. Oh, Pat, good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm just ringing in, uh, maybe it's a wee word of warning. You're talking about uh, the ice and car windscreens. Have you, I mean, can I, can I say, talk to you like a friend? Go ahead. Uh, we, we can't name the particular de-icing uh, agent, of course. Uh, right, because... and I won't be naming mine either. Go on. But does yours work? No, no, this is, this is it didn't, it, it worked, it worked, but there's a hazard involved, and that's what I just, this is, I've been told this is true, and I believe it to be true. And I just want to relate it to our listeners, just in case anybody considered trying this, you know, as an alternative method to... Yes, yes. ...to clearing windscreens. Yes. Uh, now, this, uh, you know, so he's a friend of a neighbour of mine, and uh, he got caught in our mind, come back to the, what do you call it, he came back to the car, he had a park down the car park, quiet corner. Yes. He came back to the car and she was all iced up. Yes. Uh, and normally what, what he called we do, what we all do, is go and get a kettle and serve hot water. That's what any normal people do, yeah. Absolutely, but... Uh, that wasn't available. No. And then he was thinking maybe uh, lukewarm water might do the job. It would, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah. So without. I, no, no, don't. I hope I don't. Uh, do I do I do I know what's coming? Do you know what's coming? Yeah. Well, that's what did come. Did he pee on it? He uh, well, he was sort of, he decided that he wasn't going to get the the, the the best benefit of what he had. Yes. Uh, he was sort of unless he got up in the bond of the car. Yes. Well. Yes. And he got up in the bond of the car, as I was told it, and he was kneeling on the bond, uh, on the bond of the car. Not much to hold on to up there. Absolutely, it's a hazardous business. And uh, he had got, got it brave and went clear, but then he decided to put the finishing touches out to the edge of the windscreen for to make a, to make, a, to make a good job of it. Did he try and sign it? Uh, and he <laughs> fell off the, the bond of the car, broke the, 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 the wiper. Grab the wiper, trying to fall, and now he's going into what he called. He's going into the chiropractor. It's going to cost him at least twenty pounds. Well, was he hurt in any way? Oh, I. Well, he's twisted the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, only a fool would actually try that manoeuvre because absolutely, obviously, if a windscreen is frozen up, the bond will be slippy as well. Uh-huh. So any man who just decides to pee in his windscreen from a height uh, has to stand on some kind of surface, and that surface must be on, on his car. Uh-huh. And we'll, we'll be tied the man who will try that. And, uh, and see, I thought you were going to say that he tried to sign it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the Alice Snow, Jerry. Stop it. Go away. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Anyway, do you ever do that? Apparently he's got a great recipe for goose soup. 
Who has? Pat that you talked to. Oh, Pat has a great yeah. recipe for good yeah. soup. Uh-huh. But how did this come to your attention? A lady phoned there just... Uh, just for no reason at all? Just, just to tell you he had a recipe for good she soup? She heard him and she said, get him to give his recipe for good soup. It's lovely. I heard you saying yesterday that you're not going to get a turkey this year. <laughs> How did you hear that? I heard that because... You I, hear everything. I hear everything. You're a nosy wee... Shite. Well, what have you got against turkeys this year? What are you going to have? You going to get a goose? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Are you? No, I'm getting a big chicken. A big chicken? Yeah. You can get a chicken any day. I, I know, but I, a slice of turkey's all right. Yeah, of course it is. That's all right. That does, does, does me. You don't have to eat the whole thing, you yes. know. Well, well, let's face it. You don't have to eat the whole thing. Here's what you do with turkey. You get a turkey. You don't get a too big one. You get one that's reasonably sized. No, I just don't like turkey. So you do. Full so, stop. Let me, let me tell you about turkey. You get a turkey about 13 pounds, right? You have it on Christmas Day. It's a routine. It's a religious thing. You kneel down around it. You don't offer it okay. up. Okay. Second day, you have it, you enjoy it. But on the second day, then the third day, you make a turkey curry and then you, you throw it out the fourth day. See, what, 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 people who try and make it last for the fourth day, they're the ones who are in trouble. Only three days. I just, our, Lord, I, our Lord rose after like three it. days. I don't like it the second day. No, you don't, you don't like it don't the first like day. It. You I don't, don't like, like anything the first day. I do. I like chicken. Our um, Lord rose the third day and said, I don't want I no like, more turkey. I like chicken. chicken. I don't want no more turkey, he said after the third day. Chicken and ham, I like. Why don't you just get sausages and chips? That would do me. I know. Get them back off the soldier. You don't have to tell me I know every reason why You feel the way you feel And you cry when you cry But baby, can you show me How I get so far behind From the bottom of your heart To the back of your Sarah Watkins. She was in the Eric Lynn last week. We'll be back after the news. Two to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. And at 11 o'clock, this is the BBC News with Keith Burnside. The executive at Stormont has agreed legislation which will transfer responsibility for most planning decisions from civil servants to local councillors. The Environment Minister Edwin Putz told the Assembly this morning that the planning bill will be introduced next week. Our environment correspondent Mike McKim reports. If the proposed changes go ahead, most people will seek planning permission from the local council by around 2013. The planning service will cease to exist and major strategic schemes like the John Lewis scheme would remain within the DOE. In the meantime, a new policy bringing in mandatory standards for councils will be put in place later next year. It would mean that any councillor who abuses a new planning system could be banned from office for up to five years. 
Most of the existing planning staff will become council employees. And a series of pilot programmes will start from April next year to test how planners and councils can work together and to give councillors experience in what would be expected of them in the future. The Business Secretary Vince Cable has revealed there's a possibility they could abstain in the Commons vote on the Coalition Government's plan to increase tuition fees. He said his personal instinct was to vote for the rise, but he would go along with what Liberal Democrat MPs decided. If we all abstain, then that's the position that uh, I'm happy to go along with. But my own personal instincts, because I'm the minister responsible for the policy and because I think the policy is right, uh, would be to support it. But as I say, you know, th there is an option that we all abstain together. An inquest into the death of baby Peter Conley will not go ahead. The coroner, Andrew Walker, has ruled that questions about the case have already been answered in previous investigations. Baby P died aged just 17 months after months of abuse in 2007. His mother, her boyfriend and a lodger have all been jailed. A security alert in West Belfast has ended. Police said the object left outside a house in Heath Lodge Drive off the Ballygum Martin Road was a hoax. The weather now, here's Barra Best. First, it was the big chill. Now we have the wind chill factor. Temperatures of 2 or 3 degrees today will feel much colder in bitter easterly winds. Some snow showers for coastal areas, one or two inland, but for the most part it's a dry and bright day with good spells of sunshine. Mainly dry again this evening and overnight with a few wintry showers and temperatures will fall below zero for many of us. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel news. Snow and ice are still causing difficult driving conditions, especially in southern counties, with reports of very poor roads around Mayo Bridge and Hill Town, as well as between Cross Midlen and Newry. There's also been another snowfall around Castle Blaney, Carrick Macross and Monaghan, and some bus services are also being disrupted due to icy roads. For more information, contact Translink on 02890 666630. Then in South Belfast, the traffic lights are now back to normal at the junction of Balmoral Avenue and the Malone Road. On to flights at the George Best Belfast City Airport. This morning's flights to and from Leeds Bradford have now been cancelled. Also, the Flybe flight from Gatwick has been indefinitely delayed. And at the International, the early morning flight from Leeds Bradford is now expected at 20 to 12. EasyJet's flight from Gatwick is now due at 20 past 11. And the Aer Lingus flight from Heathrow is delayed to 11 to 25. And Jordan reporting. Travel news on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talkback with Connor Bradford, a shake-up in planning. Now your local councillors will make the decisions. Are we going to end up with ugly bungalows everywhere? We want your calls. Also, we'll be talking to Dana about the loss of her nephew Killian Scallon and his wife Pauline to carbon monoxide poisoning. And she's out of the jungle. Is Gillian McKeith the most annoying contestant of all time? Now that she's not there, will you still watch? Also, we'll be talking to a man who leaves parking tickets on your car, congratulating you on good parking. I've got one here. It says, you have parked beautifully. Nice idea or just really annoying? That's Talk Back at Midday. I'm so, so, so in love, love, he thinks I'm so, 
I'm so, so, so in love, love. He thinks I'm so, so, so in love, love. He thinks I'm so, so, hurt you, so hurt you, hurt you, hurt you. I'm so, hurt you, so hurt you, hurt you, hurt you. I'm so, I'm sorry that I hurt you, so hurt you. That's different, isn't it? That's a young lady called Naomi O'Rourke. She sent me a little demo on the strength of that. I asked her to come into the studio and she's going to come in just after Christmas. She's different, isn't she? I'm not quite sure where she's from, but we'll find out all about her. Here's a young lady that you know, Nalik Brawley, along with some friends. This is an album called String Tones. And this is called, oh, this is an Irish, I can't even begin to pronounce it. So I won't even try it. Oh 
That's good, isn't it? That's uh, String Tones and that's a Nolly Brawley and Friends Who Are. And if I had in front of me, I could tell you who the friends are, but I haven't got in front of me, so I can't tell you who the friends are. But I'll look quickly and try and find who the friends are. There they are. That's Brendan Hendry and Paul McSherry and Nolly Brawley. The album is called String Tones. And I think that was launched just on Friday there. Uh, I have to right a wrong here. I've been harsh, perhaps, in talking about horse lips, but I was talking about not horse lips, but other bands, really. Uh, and a gentleman says, just wanted to let you know that I saw horse lips last year and they were stupendous. They managed to do something that even Eric Clapton, Mr. Personality himself, a little wryness there, something that Eric Clapton couldn't do and that was to fill to the brim the Odyssey Arena. Whether they are in it for the money or not, it gives people like me who are too busy at the time to catch up. Too busy at the time? I missed them all those years ago. and it was my Imagine if you were busy when you were mm. 18. Mm. Were you busy when you were 18? No, I had nothing to do. Neither had I. He was busy when they were 18. Oh. I missed them all those years ago, and it was my chance at last to see a true original one-off Irish band who single-handedly invented a new form of Irish rock music. Well, they did do that. They are legends in their own lifetime. Play more horse lips. Well, give them the credit. But you see, I think people can play too long. No, I, I, mm. I, you can play too long because you don't have the fire. You see, whenever you're 18, 19, up to till you're about 30, I think 30 is about the time my fire went out when I was 31. How do the four tops get on? Well, there's only three of them now, isn't there? Three tops. Three tops. <laughs> well, you see... But how do they? they yeah, they're, no. they're the longest uh, surviving group, aren't they? Well, the drifters. What about the drifters? No, so they're all... Oh, there's the million grift, drifters, which... <laughs> <laughs> I offended a guy. You know him well. I offended him. Uh, this fella occasionally used to play with the drifters, right? Uh. And as you know, there are a million drifters bands. And I said... I was watching TV the other night and I saw a comedian coming out. Mm. And he said something very funny. And he said, what was that? He said, the comedian out. And he said, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before I go any further, can I just ask you, is there anyone here who hasn't played with the Drifters? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't think it was all that funny. Uh. Anyway, uh, got the horse lips tickets, uh, gentleman Stephen. Thank you very much for reading that out. Much appreciated. Now, let me just get this straight. I'm not, I'm not slacking horse lips. All I'm saying is that, you know, the fire in you, as far as music is concerned, you've got about five, most people have got about five or four six good years that's if they have any talent at all the people who have no talent they're still playing in the pubs but the people who have any talent at all have got about five or six good years and then it die, the, the fire dies within them you know and that's it that's just the way because you look at Van Morrison God rest him I mean sorry not God rest him <laughs> God, God help him yeah. you know Astro Wakes and as far as I'm concerned it was over for Van you know mm. I mean that's, that was his flourishing his, his flowering and after that, he just sang the same song, basically. And that's the way it goes. And once you accept that, that's all right. But then, having said that, I went to see Van in the Royal Albert Hall last year. And he did. What did he do? Astral Weeks. And he was wonderful. But he, he, he recaptured it. But, you know, you can't, sometimes you can't do any better than that. So I think you, after about 30, I think you should stop. But you see, a lot of, time, a lot of times, people, musicians, that's, by the time they get 30, it's their job. And they don't know nothing else to do. I mean, the Four Tops are different. A lot of those black groups in America, they were more show business mm. than music. So it's easy to keep on going in a show business vein than it is in a creative musical vein. Look at your eyes glazing. But it over. must be hard, like the Four Tops, do you, every night. If and the you same, feel that same you can't go on. And, ah, and the same we dance and turn around. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Should we know. live? Should we, should, do we not live with the drifters? Yeah. How excited they were to go on stage every night? I know. <laughs> <laughs> It was time to go on board, you know, you know, damn. No. <laughs> um, one night a couple... Remember... Sorry. One night yeah. a couple... No. Go oh, You first. No. No, go well, ahead. Y- well, yeah. Go ahead. Yesterday you were talking to Noelle. No, yes. Do you remember she got her car stolen? Yes, That's, yes, yes. Right? And, yes. and she, 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 she said that... Uh, she just bought twenty pounds worth of meat as well too. And so the thieves were well fed. Right yes. now, well, McKerney's, the butchers in the Moy, yeah. the Moy, right? Yes. McKerney's, the butchers in the Moy. So they were listening to the story yesterday, and uh-huh. they say they would like to supply her with a turkey for Christmas. How nice is that? Isn't that nice? What do you call that for him in the Moy? McKerney's. McKerney's. Very good. Thank you very much, McKerney's. Nice them? Very nice of them indeed. Well, and you know, one of the things that I, I think that we don't do in this program, and people uh, ask me about this all the time. Uh, when I'm going about my daily business around the city and in other cities of the world, uh, people often stop me and they say things like, do you remember that wee woman on the other day was looking for this, looking for that? Mm. How did she get on? And I always have to tell them the truth. I say, I don't know. That's because the people who work in the programme don't care. <laughs> and as soon as the programme is over, they forget about it completely and there's no follow-up service of any kind and they don't tell me anything, even if people tell them anything. 
So I, I just have to be honest. So I was talking to a lady yesterday and she said, do you remember the girl that came on? She was very upset and she had lost her little dog which looked like Toto out of mm -hmm. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And she wanted to know, how did, did she ever get her wee dog back? Mm -hmm. And do we know? No. You see? No, 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 no. You don't know. We don't know, no. I know, but you... In other words, could, 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 could we find say. out? Well, no, what? seriously, because this is the yes. type of thing that I'm concerned about, but you, people don't care. You see, I, I want to do following up, but I'm so busy doing charity work and working for the Lord. You know that I can't have time to do that, but you two have nothing else to do, but you don't, you prefer, Alan, uh, Janet prefers to do her nails. That's Emma. You, you prefer, I said Emma. Yeah, Sorry, that's Emma. Sorry. We alternate. We alternate. <laughs> but, well, I do you, Janet, some days. <laughs> but you prefer to play golf and uh, Emma does her knitting, you know, so there's no follow-up operation. So uh, uh, if that lady is listening... But you see... The I, lady who... Will you let me finish? No, the lady I just want to defend myself. The, you don't have to defend yourself. Yes, I do. Everybody knows I'm right. It's the question of the little lady who lost the dog and she was very upset and her dog was like, Toto, uh, did she get her dog back? Uh, if, if she's listening, give us a wee ring if you did and if you didn't, I'm sorry. One night a couple came to our house for a night's there's crack. A call. I know that. No, Can't you not. hear me talking here? There's, there's no not. call? She knows you interrupted me for no reason. <laughs> one night a couple to... <laughs> one night... It went away. Emma said it, it, went, it went away. The call it went away. Went. One night, we're very selective with these calls, you know. One night, a couple came to our house for a night's crack, says Michelle. At about 2 a.m., we saw them out to their car. It was covered in snow. The man said he had a de-icer. I said, not at all. That stuff is crap. I'll get you a kettle of water. You'll get the car warmed up. I came out with the kettle and poured water over the windscreen. He instantly turned on the windscreen wipers and splashed the water all around me, then drove off, not knowing that I was absolutely soaked. You see, this is something that we should tell the people. A lot of people do that. That happened to me a, a number of times. Whenever you put water on a windscreen, don't put your windscreen on right away, especially if there's a person there pouring it on, because that person will get very wet indeed. Yeah. Uh, someone rings uh, to ask, is it true that it was so cold in Derry yesterday that Anderson put his hand in his own pocket? <laughs> John from the band Jekyll Rings... They supported horse lips at the Whitley Hall the last time they played there. If anyone has photographs of the night, could they please put it on Facebook? John would like to see them. Did I ever tell you about the time? No, you see, I know horse lips. Uh, we supported horse lips one night, and they were very impressed with us. They said we supported horse lips in the un new University of Ulster in Coleraine. The chess man. No. A band that I was in called Toe Jam. Toe Jam, all right. Yeah. We played with them, and the horse lips afterwards said that we were the drunkest band they had ever seen. <laughs> Our drummer was carried out on a trolley. So, well, I remember that night well. What a success. I think it did our career no harm whatsoever. Do you remember the first song you played yesterday? Someone's looking for details on it. If you feel that you can't go on, because all of your hope is gone. Uh, I don't remember, no. Maybe perhaps uh, Emma would know. After all, it is her job to write these things down. Emma wasn't on duty yesterday. Janet was. So when Janet goes away, the whole thing just goes down the tubes, does it? Thank you for acknowledging my pleas yesterday, said Ken, regarding my duck. He lost his duck. No response locally. The duck seems to be an ex-duck now. Can you please ask the learned Mr Tuft for his opinion on the plan to introduce my now widowed Drake to another similar creature offered from the Port Stewart area, this time an Indian runner type. An Indian runner duck. I didn't even know there was such a thing called an Indian runner duck. Does he think they will get on or fight? Ultimately, we would hope to acquire a lady partner for my drake, but in the meantime, company for the drake is what I have in mind, as he has taken to following the hens around. But they are being a bit unsociable. You see, I'm familiar with this syndrome. If you lose one, you try and get another one. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's handy. A man was thinking about your complaint yesterday and says that he thought he would write a poem. Hello, Sean, the doctor said. Come and sit upon my knee. Drop those drawers that publicise Star Wars and we'll see what we will see. You're bent like a hoop. Do you have the croup? You're shaking like a jelly. Here, put my stethoscope round your neck whilst I gently rub your belly. I like a drink, said Sean. But doctor, I'm no wino. I've never woken up covered in puke, face down, on the lino. <laughs> I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robert, do you, ever, no, do you remember lino, oil yes, cloth? Yes. It's yes, called yes. oil cloth, lino. You see, before people had carpet. And they had that type of thing when you and I would have been drinking heavily. You had to walk on your tiptoes. You had to be very careful. Mm. And do you know what I used to hate? No one used to get up in the morning. 
you remember what that was Freezing. like? Freezing. People never had any central heating at that time. Mm. You, had, you, had a, you had a fire down below. Yeah. Well, apart from that. <laughs> <laughs> you, had a fire, you had a fire down in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, but in, your, in the bedrooms, there was no heating of any kind. And uh, I remember you used to pile the blankets on the bed. But the only thing was, on the floor was linoleum, or as it was called then, oilcloth. Now, to get to your trousers, which were on the other side of the room usually, uh-huh. you had to dangle a tootsie out, hadn't you? <laughs> And you had to walk across. I, I can feel that freezing yeah, no. cold linoleum yes. now. Yes. And you walk across going, <gasps> uh-huh. A rubber glove went snap. Sean lost the bap, cried the doctor, nurse the screens. Then Sean told the doctor about his strange, weird dreams. So you dream of Jerry, said the doc, as on his knee we Sean did rock. Said the doctor as he scratched his ear, I find that sweet and beautiful, but no way stranger. Here, here, here. Now, why the tear? You have no need to feel great fear. I'm a medical man, gowned and robed. Each man who comes here and here must be probed. Before he could yell, stall a wedding, he knew well where that hand was heading. Oh, this he did not fancy. But though he kicked and though he flung, he probed. He was probed like our friend Francie. Sean sat on the doctor's knee, feeling sad and very wee. The, the nurse said later, so they say, the doc crooned in falsetto, How's the wee man the day? After the cute wee childish song, the doctor could find nothing wrong. He told Sean to cut out sweets as he went tramping through the streets. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point to that, you know, really. I just like reading it. Uh, and I've, call. Is there? Yes. Where is it, I wonder? I wonder. I wonder, I wonder. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce you to the following caller. Hello, good morning. Is that, is that me? Yes, it is you. Who is this someone? Yeah. What? Sorry, who's that? It's Sharon from Lisburn. Sharon from you? Lisburn, what about you, love? I'm down no. in your country on Friday night. Oh, yeah, what about? Highland Arts Centre, me and Sean Donnelly will be down in Lis- Lisburn, happily playing and singing for the people. Oh, happy days. <laughs> um, I hear I've got to be bone to pick with you, Jar. Poke away, pick away, poke away. <laughs> um, I'm that girl who lost its dog. Are you? Yeah. The, the wee dog that was like Toto. Yeah, uh-huh. Did you get it uh, back? Um, no thanks to you. What do you mean, no thanks to me? <laughs> you said if I hadn't got him back to ring you back on Friday. Yes. And I rang back and a text back and you still didn't put it out. No, well, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain. You see, on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, we have people here who are directly in contact with the programme. Uh-huh. On Friday, when you ring up, the people aren't in the same room, so they don't know. Oh, right. So necessarily they wouldn't have known you, right? Uh-huh. Whereas if you had rung here, they would have known you. Uh-huh. And this is no reflection on the people on a Friday, but they, <laughs> they, they don't, they have no personal connection with the programme. They just take uh-huh. messages. And I, uh-huh. might, I might not have got it, so I apologise for that. But did you get the wee dog back anyway? Yes, yes. Oh, I excellent. drew the boat from, he went missing on Thursday to about 8 o'clock on Thursday night, but I couldn't find him. Uh-huh. But I kept asking on on Friday, and eventually I was able to track him down. So what? some lady had taken him in, so, so I was able to get him. So he was in good condition and good nick and everything? Oh, he was a typical bloke. He even slept with another woman. Oh, excuse me. Did he smoke a fag after? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> 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 have, you, have you an ashtray there, love? <laughs> People don't say it. Remember, people don't say it anymore. What? There's a word. There's a word that's gone out. I'm going. To, I'm compiling a list of words that are suddenly becoming um, obsolete, and one one of those words is ashtray. <laughs> when was the last time you heard somebody if you got an ashtray there? Or not? That's right. Ashtray. Well, Cash register. Do you know what I? Do you know what I thought about the other night? What? I thought about the other night. Do you remember when people uh, used to spill? Alcohol, especially beer, yes. on a carpet. Yes. People say, "Oh, it's good for it. It raises the pile." <laughs> Nobody says that anymore. No, but do you remember that time? Uh huh. It's all right. Or ash. You reflect ash from a cigarette. Mm-hmm. That's all right. It raises. It's good. Good for the pile. That's right. You don't hear that anymore. Mm. And when was the last time you heard somebody saying they've got a match on you? No. Nobody yeah. says that anymore. Our world is changing around us. But it's good for you because you got your wee dog back. Uh, yes. Thanks a million, Jared. Sorry we didn't do that on Friday, but you know I didn't get the message. If I'd got the message, I certainly would have mentioned it. Okay, thanks a million. It's these, uh, people's, it's these people's fault here. <laughs> okay, oh, I, oh th- I blame all the people. That's, I always do that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a future in it. So I'm, I'm so glad you got your wee dog back. And thank thanks you for, a million. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. There's, you there's see? A, there's another call. Oh, too late now. Hold on a second. Is there? Hold on. Where? 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 Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realise you were there, though. Would you stop making excuses? 
I'm sorry. Listen, if you've got a radio... Always, oh, I'm away now. I'm away from it. You're always making excuses, Jerry, and blaming everybody else for yourself. Well, the only reason I can blame everybody else is because I, I don't do anything wrong. No. Oh, oh, God. Oh, Christ. That mom's dead, Jerry, many years ago. So, therefore, if I don't do anything wrong, it must be somebody else's fault. Right. Listen to me. Yes. Girl went out there at work, came back home, all our windows was open, yes. and everything was stole. Yes. How dare anybody do that to my advent calendar? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Jerry? Thank you very much. Thank you for that joke. Yes, Facebook, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Bye. 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 Do you need to think about that one? No, I heard that you said I didn't think it was funny. I didn't think it was funny either. Uh. She was a waitress at the Only John Town. She had a reputation as a girl who'd been around. I haven't played this for a while. Many people have asked me for it, but I've always refused on the grounds that it's nine minutes long. But it's nearly Christmas. She'd ride down to the river and meet with all her friends. The road goes on forever and the party never ends. Sonny was a loner, he was on the rest. He was going in the Navy, but he couldn't pass the test. So he hung around town. He sold a little pot. The law guy went to Sonny. One day got caught. But he was back in business when they set him free again. The road goes on forever. And the party never ends. Robert Errol King. The road goes on forever and the party never ends. Sonny's playing a ball at the joint where she works. With some drunk and out of town. Put his hand in Sherry's skirt. Sonny took his boot. Son, I knew a man And there was some Cuban refugees And down the coffee van Son, I met the Cubans At a house just off the roof With a briefcase full of money A pistol in his boot The cards are on the table When the law came busting in The road goes on forever And the party never ends The Cubans grabbed the goodies And Son, I grabbed the jack He broke the bathroom when they declined Single shot for ten. The road goes on forever, and the party never ends. She watched him as his taillights disappeared around the bend. The road goes on forever, the party never ends. It's nights around the midnight just like it was before. 21 months later at the local grocery store. Sherry buys a paper and a cold six pack of beer. The headlines read it's sunny, it's going to the chair. She pulls back on a main street in her new Mercedes Benz. The road goes on forever and the party never
thanks so much for coming out. That's one of the best bands in the world, in my opinion. That's Robert Earl Keane and his band. Uh, Robert Earl Keane, E-E-R-L-K-E-E-N. And that's from an album, a live album, of course, if you hadn't guessed already, called Number Two Live Dinner. And uh, that's a track called The Road Goes On Forever. Now, do you know the way during that song there that it actually just kind of takes off? Mm-hmm. Just completely takes off. Yeah. There's, there's just moments there where it just completely takes off into something that you never heard before. There is a version of that when the whole thing is like that. The mm-hmm. whole thing is like that. It just takes off from start to finish. I once had it, but I lost it. So does anyone... What are you doing there? There's a lot of noise being made there. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was, I was saying... Well, I'll tell you what I was saying. Go on. Will I tell him? No. Will I? No. Emma says no. I was sending John Bennett an email. You were sending John Bennett an email? Mm. Whilst I was bearing my soul about music, mm. you were sending an email to the president of the Sunday Club? Yeah. I asked him to play Babbling Brook by Donald Peel. That's or something. a lovely song. Oh, thank you for reminding me of it. Babbling Brook. <laughs> anyway, there's a version. Oh, of to it. be in Doonery. Do you remember that? Oh, to, to be, be in Doonery. That's no, enough. Of, yes, I do. Stop it now, please. That's a song called The Road Goes On Forever. Now, that's a live version of it. Now, if anyone. Now, if anyone's got a copy of that other version, there's a number of uh, live versions on the go. Now, the one I had was just, from start to finish, it just takes off completely. That, as I say before, that one there, every once in a while, it just takes off for like you know, 10, 20 seconds and then goes down again. But the other one just completely from start to finish. Now, I will kill to get that. I am. Now, you got it? I didn't get you it. You did? I had it originally, and then I lost it. No, and then, then people sent it to you. I, I never got it again. Will you please listen to me, what I'm saying to you? People sent me various versions. No, no, I think it is. I think it's something that you heard in the distant no. past, which you say, and no. then when you got it, it wasn't. It's like I going, it, going to it, see your favourite movie. I had it months ago. I played it in the car. I used to drive around the car, and I played it constantly in the car. I know every note of it. Yeah, but that's... I, re- I never got it again. The things that people sent to me were okay, but they weren't like this one. This one, you'll hear this one, you'll know it right away. This is the one. This is not like any of the other recordings. So I'm I, the only people, you, people out there might not know they have this, but you have, you, if you hear it, you'll know it is. You if anybody's it. got that version of it, I want it badly. You okay. had it. Will you stop talking in there? You had it and you lost it. I know I had it and I lost it. Jesus lost, Jesus found. Yeah. That's just the way it is. I think uh, I threw it away. Many a person has the greatest thing and they throw it away because they don't value it. I, I was careless. I lost it. One of the greatest pieces. Is there a I've call? Pardon? Is there a call? I don't know. You're in charge of calls. Yeah, but I can't see my screen, nor I can't see Emma's screen. Would you check your fader? Hello, is there anyone there? <laughs> it's Martin Lynch, Jerry. Martin Lynch, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry you were treated so shabbily by the staff. <laughs> and they said, "Is there anyone there?" And I suddenly find a prominent playwright. Thank you, Sean, for the respect shown to Martin Lynch. I didn't know. I Good morning, told Martin, John. I apologise. I my apologise? I know I said to, I apologise. I had to turn him off because I can't stand this disrespect any longer. Martin, I apologise for the way you've been treated by the people in this program who know no better. How That's okay. Pe- good morning, good morning, good morning. I believe you're looking for a pup. We are we're looking for maybe two or three pups. Okay, we're tell d- me the story. Well, we're doing the show Christmas Eve can kill you, the popular comedy by Mary Jones. Yes. And we're putting on the, the fantastic Theater, theater de Mill, the Abbey, which not a lot of people know about yet. Where was that? There was, a, there, was, real... there, was a wee cut, there was a wee cut out point there when you mentioned the name of the theater. Go on, well, what's the name of the theater again? It's the Theater de Mill. I can, did you hear that? Yeah. What? <laughs> did you hear that? What, what it's is just that? Just recently built. I know, but there's a wee distortion on the line there. Whenever you is said it? that. Okay, right, go ahead. It's the Theater de Mill at Newton Abbey. Yes, okay. Just been recently built, and it's one of the treasures of Northern Ireland at the moment. A beautiful little theatre. So we're doing Christmas Eve can kill you, and a chap with the Lannis says little pup, but he's gone off and moved to the Republic of Ireland, uh, and uh, we need a little pup for a do. All right, and we probably could use two or three pups that we could interchange in the course of a the three week run. There's nothing I like better than an interchangeable pup. Now, when <laughs> when do you need these pups? Uh, it, the show begins on the 8th of December, so someone could contact, contact us any time between now and then. It runs from the 8th of December to the 31st, and we're looking for a cute little pup uh, that goes on stage for a few moments, and then it's away again, and be better, be preferable, Jerry, 
if the owners lived in the new shopping area at the time they signed the theatre. And then they could just nip down for half an hour and go back up again. That's exactly it. And we would organise street tickets to the open night to commute the cost and oh, we'll even buy them a drink and all that kind of stuff. That's right, and the, the, the pup might then eventually demand a limo after a few nights. Listen, that's right, that's right. What kind of pup do you want? Any sort of, any sort of dog at all that just looks cute, a cute little pup in the audience will all go, ah. <laughs> and right, in the then. meantime, Jay, I have to thank you for agreeing to do a guest spot in the show. Yes. If you recall. Yes. And I've been thinking about this recently. If, I'm, if we're asking you to do a guest spot on Christmas Eve can tell you, uh-huh. I may be just actually sending you on a new, a new career path. I know, I've always... Because uh, if you do well, you I've never al- know, Spielberg might be in the audience. That's right, I've always been interested in thespians. And I think yeah. it's possibly there's a new career path. I mean, now that politics seems to be ruled out. <laughs> okay then, so when does it start again? Christmas Eve will kill you. When does it start again? Christmas Eve starts on December the 8th. And if they ring our office, Jerry, and ask for Joe Ray, yes. it's Belfast 90... Two nine one five five five. That's nine oh two nine one five five five. That's for Joe Ray. Take two or three dogs or pups to, uh, probably, and we can use uh, uh, you know, a nice looking me pup. We urgently need it at this stage. Okay, and then who knows? I I may get to meet this pup. Yes, and you may. T- we'll let me get you to walk <laughs> on stage with the pup, Jack. <laughs> All right then. Okay, Martin. Best of luck with that, and I hope you get three pups. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, Jim McDonald, just used to work with you. Uh, uh, Martin wishes you a very happy Christmas. Jim McDonald. Apparently worked with you, he says, on the docks. Oh, oh for God's yes, sake. yes, yes, I knew Jim well. Yes. Last week. <laughs> uh, <a long> time. <laughs> All right, Martin, thank you. Okay, okay Jerry, we, we'll let you know what the crack is. Okay, bye. 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 Anybody else? That's a song called Mississippi from the album Love and Theft, out in 2001. And there's lots of versions of that. And that's not my favourite version, I have to say. There's one version he just plays, uh, he just sings with the piano. And that's, that's my favourite version. Although, who cares, I know, I hear you saying. That theatre, was that called the Theatre at the Mill? Uh, where Martin Lynch's uh, Christmas Eve will kill you at the Newton Abbey Council office. You were the man. I, I, couldn't, the I couldn't hear that. There's a lot of complaints about your sound today. My sound? Yes. My sound? Yes. No complaints about your sound or Emma's sound, it, just this, my sound? This is the Jerry Anderson show. But I, I, have, no, I have no control over it. It uh, sounds terrible. And one man said we were dipping in and out. Well, that's... Something that Another you're... person said it sounds that we were broadcasting from the bathroom. Well, that's Ken's fault. Um, I can't help that. I just come in here and talk. I mean, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I just open my mouth and talk. It's not my responsibility what it sounds like. There are men paid to do this. I, I hate to delegate responsibility, but, you know, surely it's somebody's fault if he sounds as if we're in the bathroom. We're not in the bathroom. And here's a lady who's... Sorry. What about a phone call? You may remember me telling you, says Michelle, I went to see the late, some people sadly disappointed by the little trinkets they're given in this world. You may remember me telling you that I went to see the Lady Boys of Bangkok a few weeks ago. I bought a souvenir black lighter with pink lettering st- stating, well, yeah. Lady Boys of Bangkok. Two weeks later, all the lettering is rubbed is off. Now, now, now it's just <laughs> a black lighter. <laughs> you see, this is, what, this is what we're up against W-E-I. here. Could you say uh, congratulations and happy wedding anniversary to Colette Sheeran, who lives in Derry. He's 49 years married today. Lots of love from husband Mixie. Mixie. Okay, well, consider consider that done. And uh, a lady has asked me to... Hold on a second. Some messages here. Can you please tell me who sings... Oh, sorry. Have you got your text messages? I have. I have. I'm just looking at them now. In years to come, hair treatment will be a lot more affordable. Oh. You'll be dead by then, though. Thank you. Uh, A follow-up story? Yes. To your hacks... My hacks? You had a hack story on Friday. What do you mean a hack story? What does uh, that mean? Hacks? Hacks? What does that mean? You had a lady on complaining about hacks in her hand. Oh, sorry. Hacks? Ha- hacks? I don't know. Hacks. Yes, you had. You talked I to her. I never used the word hack in my life. The only hack I know is people who work in newspapers. Calmerid. C-A-L-M-U-R-I-D. Calmerid cream that will cure weird. her hacks. Well, who told you that? John Bennett? Jerry, warm water and warm water and vinegar poured over windscreen. It will stay frost free for a few days. It works great. That's a little household tip. These are these are follow up stories that you ask for, and then when I give them to you, you're you're making light of them. I'm making light, and as a matter of fact, sometimes poking fun at them. You are a little strange from the front. 
says a gentleman. Definitely curiosity value. Jerry, your loyal listeners will club together and give you a voucher for the hair clinic as an Xmas present. Or should I say Christmas? I always say Xmas. If I see it, I read it out. I'm Ron Burgundy. Listen, if Jimmy Nesbitt went back three times, Mm -hmm. it's an awful lot of money. But you look at his hair. There's a photograph in the Telegraph. I suggest that anyone... I believe there may be a clause... Santa Claus? No. I, I enjoy... <laughs> I, I would imagine that people out there who don't believe anything they hear in this program, and there are many, go out and buy the Belfast Telegraph today. I don't normally urge that, but today go out and buy the Belfast Telegraph and look at page five or six or whatever, and you'll see Jimmy Ellis, Jimmy Ellis, Jimmy, uh, what is his name, Nesbitt, before and after, and there is a huge difference. Big slap head. And then suddenly, he's like 20 years younger. You know the way Daniel is when he comes back but from Tenerife? But he about it. I don't think so. Would he? Well, maybe well, he would. prepared to be photographed. Yeah, why don't you ring him up and ask him? Will I? Yeah, ring him but up and ask him to talk about it. Yeah. And Not today, maybe no, tomorrow. No, no. Well, I want to get ready for it. We'll do it privately him. first. Do it privately first. Uh-huh. And then I'll get ready to talk to him tomorrow and I'll explain mm. my position. What about my Mike Michael? My Michael. What are you pair of boys doing in the studio today because you're cutting in and out as if you're flicking a switch from Robbo the Hobo? There you are. There's a lot of complaints. I can do nothing about this, and I apologise I apologize in the bottom of my heart if the sound in the studio is not what it should be. We just come in here and talk. It's all those people's fault. Uh, it's not Ken. Well, who is it then? Ken's on a course in Coleraine or who? someplace. In other words, there's nobody minding the storm. Yes, yeah, Shane's here. Shane. Mm. I like Shane. Yeah. Well, I don't want to blame well, him, but we'll have to. No, well, no, maybe Ken left him a, 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 a pinking studio. He probably left him, well, a, a, a smoking gun. Uh, Ken's Jerry, on I hope a, what sort of course would Ken be on? A, a little sneak course. I hope you've never kept a woman waiting as long as you kept me for Tommy Kelly's Spanish Eyes. Okay, what's the story about Tommy Kelly's Spanish Eyes? Uh, a man put it in a box yesterday and tried to get it to work. A, a man worked at it. We tried to get Ken yesterday but he was up to his eyes because he was preparing to go on his course and he had a hold on a second he was up in his eyes he was up to his eyes because he was preparing to go on his course he was up to his eyes trying to get all his work finished here in Radio Foil before he went on his course <laughs> and I went out to the garage where he was working what was yesterday he doing? what was he doing he was sawing a, a desk <laughs> in half was there a woman sitting at it? No, there's another man there oh. with a big donkey jacket on him. Donkey jacket. You know. Oh. Well, I think Ken's given woodwork lessons. Anyway, never And mind. I told him that you were looking for, you know, what you're looking for. What did he say? He threw a hammer at me. Well, you see, that's not the response that we want. Dear Mr. Anderson, have you heard that Paddy Nash and the Happy Enchiladas have just released their Christmas song? It will surely be a hit in Northern Ireland. It's called It Being Christmas. I don't have a copy of that. I'm sure the listeners would love you to play it if you have a copy. Please, somebody send me a copy of that. And Jerry, Sean, uh, Sean, this is for you. Ask Jerry, could he recommend any good tourist spots to visit in Derry Stoke, London, Derry? My wife are going up to stay a couple of days on the 27th, the 28th of December. Well, that's a good idea. Well, you know, okay, it'll be two days after Christmas. Hmm. Well, there are lots of nice places. But one of the nicest things, I think, uh, is the new Peace Bridge. Because it's a beautiful sight, isn't it? Have you been down there to look at it? <laughs> Hello? No, I, I drive past it going to play golf. Oh, <laughs> well, why don't you get out of the car sometime no, and have a look at our not, new piece? Not it's, it's, it's not complete. finished yet. Yeah, so, so, so it's it's a wonderful sight. Okay, uh, people, one of the things I suggest that people do do uh, when they do come to Derry Stoke. Funny enough, there. the mayor was in here this morning and uh, he asked me to accompany him uh, across the bridge on the first... Uh, That's because he knows the, it's not finished On yet. the opening walk, no, on the opening day. He wants me to walk with him. Walk with me mm-hmm. on the opening day. Mm-hmm. So there. You and Jerry and him? Is that what he said? Three of, three no, of no, no, you weren't, you weren't mentioned. No, no, oh, no. Is no, no, that no, the way it goes? No. Anyway, uh, there's many, many things to do here in Derry Stoke London. Day. Many lovely walks. For instance, one of the things I would recommend is that they walk down along the, the riverside. Like it's not long enough. And then enough. you turn back when you get to the alcoholics. It's not long enough. It's long enough, surely. It's not. And then maybe the, the Tower Museum, of course, is a wonderful thing. And uh, that'll be open. Uh, one of the best museums I've ever seen. And then Derry Walls, of course, Derry City Walls. Walk around there at your leisure. And uh, many, many things and lots of friendly places to go and nice places to have a cup of tea and bite to eat and friendly people and pl- plenty crack in the pubs, plenty of women wearing, wearing very little clothing, uh, that kind of thing. Many, many things to do. <laughs> what a great... <laughs> you should be the tourist officer. That's, 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 that's what I see. Uh, you know, I can only reflect what I see in my own eyes. What about Michael? Here's a person wishing you a happy 85th birthday, Sean. <laughs> um, and also a happy 75th birthday to James McConkie. 
Ernie Harrison, Joe Chambers and Ezekiel McCleary. All stewards, all stalwarts of New Mills uh, love the programme. There we go. Are uh, you two in the bathroom? No, we're not. You see? Sounds like it. You apparently, see, what apparently my mic is a lot louder than yours and I can barely hear you. Barely hear me? Yes. That's well, you see, in my ears, I'm much louder than you are. Michael. You see, there's no way I can tell. What's Michael? Michael on one. Hello, good morning, Michael. Good morning, Jerry. Can you hear one of us more than the other? I can hear both of you equally well, oddly enough. You that see, makes we, a change for this programme, mind we, you. We, we, we must get some kind of consensus <laughs> uh, as to what the story is here. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. You do lead a very interesting life. I mean, what with cures for hacks and puppies uh, for plays. And, and sometimes oh, I, I get so excited I don't know where to look. I know, I know. Uh-huh. When are you going to post a, a picture on, on, on the website of your new hairstyle so we can all share in the joke? I mean, joy. Uh, it's on the, it's on my pillow. Is it right? And I, I swept it out. It's in the bin. Uh, <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to Jimmy Nes, but now that he's come out, That'd be I'm right going to find out what the tariff is because that's the most important thing. Make gonna, sure we all enjoy, we, we all share in that. I'm going to get him to put a word. In, I'm going to get him to put a word in for me. Jerry, and, before the program ends, I'd like to enlist your help. Um, if you put out a request, me please for a, a novel uh, by a, 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 a discontinued novel. It's. Um, the Village Mystery. Yes. By Annie M. P. Smithson. She was a very popular Irish novelist in the twenties and thirties. Mm-hmm. And my wife is trying to recreate a, a family collection. And uh, out of twenty odd books, some say nineteen books written by this woman, I think we've already got twenty. She's missing one, and it's this The Village Mystery. Right. There's bound to be a copy out there somewhere. I've tried the, the net and you know, used booksellers and such like, but so far, no, no um, joy. So, with your great assistance, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll turn up trumps. It shall be done. Just to repeat the name of the book, please. It's The Village Mystery. Okay, by uh, whom? By Annie M. P. Smithson, and it was published by Parkside Press, Dublin, 1945. Say no more. I imagine some person would have a copy of that and will contact this programme before great. you're very much older. Thank you very much, Jerry. Not at all. We shall contact you if such an, uh, a thing occurs. God bless you. God bless you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This is Andy Irvine. Remember he came into the studio down in Blackstaff? Remember how good he was? Yes. He was a brilliant, brilliant musician. And what a nice person. What a nice person. Uh, you know, compared to us. It's of three huntsmen, brave and bold, as I have heard them say. They took five hundred guineas, all on one market day. And as they rode home together, o'er the Wicklow mountains high, Oh, it's hold your horse, cries Johnson, for I hear a woman cry. I will not stop, says Wilson, I will not stop, says he, and nor will I stop, says Gilmore, for of them afraid we'll be. But Johnson getting off his horse and searching the woods all round till he found a naked woman with her hair pinned to the ground. O oh, woman dear, O oh, woman dear, how came you here for to span? Who that brought you here on this May morning with your hair pinned to the ground? It was three bold and struggling men with swords keen in hand. Who that brought me here this May morning with my hair pinned to the ground? But my father, he's a wealthy man. And your kindness he'll repay My life I place all in your hands Protect me, sir, I pray Well, Johnson, being a man of his own Being valiant, brave and bold He took off his coat from off his back For to keep her from the cold And Johnson getting on his horse The woman got on behind they rode down that lonesome valley, their fortunes for to find. 
and as things rolled on along the way as fast as they could ride, she threw her fingers to her lips and she gave three shivering cries. Out sprang three bold and struggling men with swords keen in hand Who commanded him to tarry, commanded him to stand Well I will stand, says Johnson, I'll stand then, says he For I never was in all me life afraid of any three And Johnson killing two of them, not minding the woman behind. As he was at the other one, she stopped him from behind. The day was free and the market day, the people all passing by could have seen this awful murder, could have seen poor Johnson die. That's Andy Irvine, Three Huntsmen from an album called Abu Kura, Back Tomorrow.